Yeah, okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, good to be back with US Chess School again, and I'm going to go over an interesting game I played today. Uh, today we're going to go over a game I played some years back, which uh, was um, uh, which was interesting, but uh, I think really should have shown how good defense could have been played. I failed to save this game, uh, but I could have if I had defended a bit better. So this was, I think, round six of Millionaire Chess, if I recall, and I had just beaten Sevi in that morning in round five in what was a very long game, and so I had very little time. I wolfed down some food. I was tired from the previous round. I hadn't had much time to digest, and so coming into this game, I had a spot where if I could just sort of like hang on with black and hopefully draw a relatively easy game, get to bed early, and then hopefully win with white the next round, I would have qualified for like the, the final playoffs. But um, that was my goal and it didn't happen. So we're going to take a look at how I could have played better and hopefully you guys will be able to find some good defensive moves. So this is a game with Zhu Jianchao, who's a Chinese grandmaster. Uh, that This is the first time I had played him. So um, started off as, uh, as a Slav and I played this classical Slav with... Um, or the E6, which is known as the P-Sack variation. Um, and uh, after F3, Bishop B4, does anybody know what nowadays White's most challenging option is? Yeah, so Arnav knows it, Anish knows it. Um, but yeah, so... Um, so yeah, uh, a lot of people get this. The be the best move is um, well, actually, you don't, you guys don't know it. You guys need to know your move orders right. A lot of people are giving me king f two here, which is a big mistake. Um, king f two would be a serious mistake. Why is king f two wrong? Black has a very nice move here. Slow down, guys. No, a whole bunch of people have given me a lot of wrong stuff. Just slow down. It's not that hard. King f2 is the right idea, but this is the wrong moment for it. What does black do now? Still no one's got it. You should, you guys, like a whole ton of people have given me wrong answers. It's because you're moving too fast. If you guys slow down, you're very much good enough to find this. It's just you're trying to move immediately, which is not going to work. Yes, Arnav, you want to share with us? Okay. So Arnav, I'm going to ask you to unmute. If you're talking, I can't hear you. Um, okay, so Arnav, I can't hear you. I don't know what that issue is. I'm going to ask someone else. Let me uh, let's see. Rhea, you want to share? Find you, Rhea. No, you don't want to share. Okay, fine. Um, all right, well, we're going to skip over this because everyone says... Um, so the basic point is that bishop c2 is very powerful. And the real point is white can't take it comfortably because after queen c2, queen takes d4 check, we're going to take this knight, uh, which means that white's going to have to play queen d2, and that's a really bad sign. And I think black has a pretty reasonable position. Uh, so the best move for white, in my opinion, is as he played in the game to start with knight takes c4, so that after castles now and only now, white can play king f2 one bishop c2 will not work. And the whole point of king f2 is to get out of this pin. Like, if you were to play e4 here, I'm going to sacrifice a piece. And I had this position against Grishchik, for example, and it's a complicated game, but eventually a draw. And um, and I think black is basically fine here. Uh, there's some further variations, of course, but uh, once we go knight takes c4 castle, if white were to play e4 here, if I'm not wrong, knight takes and queen h4 check is absolutely devastating. Uh, you cannot split a g3 because your rook will drop, and king e2, there is bishop g4, and king d2, I mean, good luck playing this position with white. 
So this all seems um, seems pretty unpleasant. And so I think White's best move is to play um, is to play King F two uh, with the point that now this pin is broken and White can hope for C four next and E four next. Excuse me. And if White is able to play E four, like let's say Black just develops calmly and then after e5 bishop g6 this king on f2 is totally safe white can bolster his center with bishop e3 and white's going to be clearly better uh in part due to his big center but i think probably the bigger reason is that this bishop is just really really bad so uh what does black have to do to justify his position i know carwana had some idea in the candidates later this year with better engines but i played the more natural um i played the more natural move in this game yeah, so a lot of people are getting this. I think we can just move forward. I mean, Caruana played e5, and I think he must have misremembered his preparation somewhere, because e5 is probably a pretty good move, but he also quickly got a bad position. Um, but I think c5 is what Black should play. He really needs to bust the center. And here, White goes for e4, uh, with the point that we cannot take this one. What would White play here to win the game in one move? Yeah, everyone sees this. Uh, so that would win a piece. But here, black has some interesting options. So twice I played this move, bishop c3, where I sacrificed everything. Um, I got this position here, like, um, takes. And then this was with Larry Kaufman. And if I recall, he played uh, queen d3 three here and if i'm not wrong that's a big mistake and he's supposed to play queen e1 instead and i ended up winning i thought a pretty nice game but if you go queen e1 here i think white's probably better anyhow i came to this game with a novelty which was bishop g6 it looks um or it looks kind of dumb I, I think maybe this wasn't the novelty here but uh it looks a little bit dumb but my point was the sacrifices are still coming so after knight a2 Game continues with knight c6, knight takes b4, knight takes b4, and queen v3. And I'm pretty sure Kaufman actually had this position in his book and claimed white was better here because I can't easily play queen takes d4 because of bishop e3 and position looks difficult. But I had an idea before the game, which honestly, looking back now, wasn't fantastic. But, well, I, have a, I strongly believe it's what black has to play. What are we going to do here? Knight takes e4 check with the idea of after f takes c4, queen takes d4, and white's king's very exposed. We have really good compensation for the piece. So that's close. It wasn't quite what I had in mind. I do think knight e4 is best, but after queen d4, I think we're losing too much time with the queen. So mm -hmm. I guess we take on e4 is the big point, but let's say white goes bishop e2. I'm not really sure about the compensation here. Um... When we think about this queen, does the queen want to go to f6 or d4, or are we not sure yet? Probably f6. Yeah. I just don't think we're sure yet. There's going to be some cases where we want d4, some cases where we want f6. But there is one piece here that we do know where it wants to go. Bishop takes c4. Yeah. So I really like this move, bishop takes c4. And... It's harder for white to organize his pieces because like if he plays say bishop e3 which is very good against um queen takes d4 then here if black goes for some kind of knight c2 and queen f6 he's easily taking a third pawn and i think like he has a totally acceptable position well if white were to play um i mean in the game white played bishop f4 which ran into queen f6 anyway but uh here, I think the big point is that black gets flexibility. He's not worried about this move. Knight, eight, knight c2 is going to be way too powerful. And um, yeah, like if rook a2, maybe we can even slam into d1. Uh, it all seems like the position is sort of collapsing for white. So, um, and yeah, I think also queen f6 is pretty reasonable there as well. But, uh, but yeah, so in the game, white found the best move, which was bishop f4. Uh, and his point was, um, of course, I'm sure if queen takes d4, he can bring in queen e3, and he's threatening a queen exchange, and white's sort of keeping things under control. I played queen f6. This was still preparation. And um, and I played rook ad8. And basically, in my preparation here, I concluded that white was a bit better if he finds king g1 here, which strikes me as an absurdly difficult move. Um and uh but not even that much and i was ready to play that position 
Uh, unsurprisingly, white didn't find it and instead played queen takes e4. So this was my first move out of preparation. It's pretty darn obvious I have to take this one. But then queen e5 came, and then, of course, rook takes f4 is very obvious as well. King g1. And here, uh, I sort of understood that I had to be fine, at least fine, but um, because I knew I was slightly worse if he found king g1 and he didn't. So I sort of knew black was good here. But at the same time, there are some long-term strategic risks. And here, uh, there's, I think, a pretty easy way to, to just equalize on the spot. Uh, and I'd like you guys to find the best way. What I did was decent, but I, looking back, this was the start of my problems, my next move. So Ashish has played the same way I did, but I don't think it's great. Anish has also played the same way I did, which, as I mentioned, I don't think is great. To be looking carefully here. Austin, that looks really skeptical. Guys, you guys aren't thinking enough here. Like this is a, I mean, I spent like a few minutes on this and got it wrong. I mean, I would hope you guys could think a little bit before spouting out the first move that comes to your mind. There's a very clean way here for black to just be very much fine. Um, but. This is too hard. If that attitude, you're never going to beat guys like Zhu Jinchao. And there's guys that are a lot stronger than him out there. Yeah, so Austin, I like that. That's good. All right. So Austin, you want to share with us? You got it right? Okay, so. You sound like something from the Star Wars movies. I don't know if that's just me, but there's some really um, weird noises. Uh, your microphone must yeah, be. Yeah, long story. Um, I have like a voice changer and I tried to delete it, but I don't know how to remove it. Stuff like that. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, kids these days. At least when I was a kid, we just went to baseball practice and like accidentally got our like strings tied, their shoe strings tied to the fence. If we weren't paying attention, we'd never voice changed permanently. Anyhow, um, let's uh, give someone else a chance. Uh, sorry, Austin, I just can't understand you. So, um... okay, so I took on e5 here and played rook d8 and black is a little worse there. Uh, realistically, with good defense, he should not lose the game, and, and I could have defended much better, but still, we'd like to... Um, it's not a terrible decision, but I, there's just something much better that... And I even saw the move, I just missed the justification after White's second move. And it, it will easily equalize to the point that we're very, very satisfied with the position. Okay, Timothy, that's good. You want to... Um, Timothy, you want to answer? Do you sound like a Star Wars character? All right. Let's ask Timothy for his answer to share. So I played Queen H4. Yes. Threatening mid on F2 and after G3. You do Rook takes F1 check. Yeah, and here Black's absolutely winning. I completely missed Rook takes F1 check. Somehow I just wasn't paying enough attention in this move. Uh, completely turns the tables and black is I think after this white is absolutely busted um, after queen takes c4 it just looks like black has now three pawns for the exchange and his knight is going to be really good and white's going to lose some more pawns and his rooks are bad this should just be winning um, so here white has to play queen takes c5 to defend the knight and defend against the mate threat but now the next move is relatively straightforward what does black do here there's a pretty straightforward move here. Okay, so a lot of people are giving me b6, which is not totally stupid, but if, have you guys considered g3? Or have you just not noticed that this move exists? 
It's a pretty annoying move. I don't know. Maybe black is somewhat okay here. Um, but I'm worried about this c5 pawn as a weakness, and I think we can attack white's queen in a more intelligent way. So, yeah, knight a6. And as people are giving. Uh, the point is here we're going to get the same position, so white could play queen a7, but after rook c4 I think only white can be worse here. He seems like he's asking for trouble. Um, so... Like, for example, after takes, takes, black's ready for, like, I mean, if queen b7, black's definitely going to have at least perpetual, and now he's ready for, like, knight c5, and I don't think black is risking anything here. So, um, here, after knight a6, white should play the same g3, and now we will get the same endgame that we saw just a second ago, except with two differences. One, black has preserved his queenside pawn structure, which is certainly in his favor. But secondly, this knight has rerouted from b4 to c5, where it is much more active. It's harassing this pawn. This rook is also harassing the pawn without the knight getting in the way. And so I think that black is going to save this game very, very easily. Uh, he's managed to trade off a pair of pawns. He now has two connected passers. White is rapidly running out of pawns. This, if It's just a comparison thing. If we think about this endgame, and then we think about the one I got, where I just took the queen and played rook d8, you know, I think this one is, um, this one's probably holding, but the other one just seems like a very, very easy draw, and I wouldn't even think black's worse. You just start playing, and it seems totally fine. Well, this one I'm a bit less convinced by. So, um, moving on, game continued, rook c1, rook d5, knight c4, and we got a position like this one. And here it's not so easy, because black's rooks are reasonably well controlled, and white has been able to keep a lot of pawns on the board. Uh, and I ha I don't really... My pawns, while they're solid, are not actually dangerous or doing anything just yet. If we could imagine a position like this one with these pawns absent and black could start throwing his F and E pawns like really aggressively, or he could even start playing moves like rook h4, um, it seems like the position would be pretty reasonable. So... Uh, this gets very complicated. Uh, f6, e5, as Kirk has offered, is the best way. But rook e3 comes. And even around here, I still sort of thought I'm just going to save this game pretty easily. But it turned out to be a lot harder than I was anticipating. And it was only around this moment that I realized things were starting to go wrong. So, um, here. Uh, Anish says b6 is a bad move when I played it. What would you like me to play instead? Yeah, um, yeah, I think b6 was necessary. Even here, honestly, I thought I was still just going to save uh, the game pretty easily, and I really underestimated White's pressure. This move, rook c3, is extremely powerful. He wants to play rook b3, which will win my b6 pawn, uh, and that's bad news. So I had to play this, but now after b3, my rook is in some pretty notable trouble, and we get this position. So, um, I believe that, and I don't believe, I know, this position is definitely still a draw. Uh, but it takes a lot of accuracy to hang on. Uh, and you can't calculate it out all the way to the end, but the first move should not be crazy difficult, I don't think. Um, we have a decision to make. What are we going to do? Arnov, b5? That seems really dubious. So, like, a good thing you should be thinking about, as someone's pointing out, is... Do we think we're going to save this position if we just, like, transition into 4 versus 2 on the king side and get rid of the queen side pawns? That's a very relevant question that we should be thinking about. Anish says that's impossible. I don't know if it's impossible, but it's not easy. So, um... Okay, so as soon as saying rook c4, knight c4, b5, and then c4. That's not totally stupid, but the problem is after rook c4, he's going to play b takes c4. And hope that his his pawn on c4 will hold down 
the two queenside pawns pretty well, and then he basically will have a knight for two pawns, is his plan. Um, and Nietzsche is saying rook c4, b c4, and you can resign. That is definitely inaccurate, but you want to be thinking a bit more carefully than that. So, let me see, do we have pulls available here, or does Greg not do those anymore? Um, looks like Greg, only Greg can make pulls, and I guess this account can't. But, um, first point of order is we have to decide what to do about these rooks. It seems like the structure is going to change in a way that we're not going to appreciate. We don't really want to be forced to play C takes B4. We also don't want to let white play B takes C4 and, and stop our pawns that way. But we also don't want to play rook B5 when after rook A4, our rook is basically trapped anyway. So we don't have any good options here, but I think there's one that is better than the others. What should black play? So most people are saying king d5. I think that king d5 is best. I mean, I played rook takes c4, which probably saves the I mean, it definitely saves the game as well, but it makes black's life harder. Basically, the way I see this is we don't want to play rook b5. Then after rook a4, this rook's only hope is to trade for white's rook anyway, in a way that will ruin our structure still. So basically what I see is it's, we're going to get a situation where this pawn is going to hold back both of these effectively. And that's going to happen whether or not we take, if we take the rook, then white's pawn holds these guys back pretty nicely. But, and if we let white take here, obviously our pawns get doubled. But the difference is that if we drag white's pawn to c4, that keeps our king off of the d5 square. So here black's king is just a little bit more passive, which uh, can make all the difference. So um, if I had played king d5 and done something like this, I think black should save this. Uh, like after, say, king e3, let's say maybe b5, and black is going to start throwing f5 and g5 and f4. Uh, it, there's still some work to do, but realistically, I think white black will save the game. So, um, okay, hang on. So Anisha is saying that here... Uh, king d3 is better. Sure, but after, say, b5, knight f1, f5, check, and here, it's not so easy to get through, and I'm starting to throw my pawns. You can play knight c2, but if I start moving, I don't know. This has to be winning, you say? Maybe it is, knight c2. And if f4, there's king e4. No, this is, you're right, the pawns are stuck here. Let me think. This is, you're saying uh, king d3 here, yeah? Um, yeah, I don't know why I played b5. Actually, that seems totally wrong. What if I start with f5? This makes a lot more sense to me. And then um, you can go something like knight f1, I guess, to continue along with the same plan. Uh, and here my thought was I could play e4 check when... You kind of want to put your king on e3, but then your knight is sort of misplaced again, and I can play g5, and you cannot play knight e3. And it, I mean, it's not like an easy draw or anything. I still think there's some work to do, but realistically, it's just so much easier to hold this position than if your king is like stuck back on e6. So um, I think it would have been a much better decision to, uh, to go this way. Anyhow. Um, we're going to stick with what I played in the game because it will make your life difficult, but I do think it's still a draw. So f5, h4 came, e4. And my thought here was I can put my king on e5. I will go g6, h6, g5, and what could possibly go wrong? But the answer is actually quite a lot. Um, so uh, what's white going to do here to make my life miserable? Let's let you guys try to figure out how white should put his pieces to make me regret my decision and give me a real variation with a few moves ahead, not just the first thing that comes to your mind, please. Okay, guys, I'm not going to play h6 with my pawn back on g7. I'm going to play g6 first and then h6. I'm not going to let you just play h5 and freeze me. So Raja has blundered the game away. Well done. Um... He's also miscalculated it and played g5 without h6 first. Let me 
So Kirk is saying we can start with h5. But um, I'm not sure about that. H5, I might even start going king f6. H5, king f6 looks very tempting to me. Start going after that pawn. But we, there's like a there's a very concrete variation here that white needs to find to give black a hard decision. And if if white doesn't find this variation right here, which is like you know five moves ahead, he's there's no way he's ever gonna put me under any kind of pressure. So like let's give me an actual variation and not stuff like put the knight on d5. That doesn't it's not very descriptive. How do you get it there? Do you go through f1 or b1? And then what's black going to play? There's lots of things to consider here. Okay, so Anish has a variation. It's not great, but we can take a look. Anish, your line is knight b1, king e5, king e3, g6, knight c3, h6, knight a4, g5. Uh, yeah, and here... This is definitely going to be a drop. For example, after takes, let's say I take this one and go f4 check and then stick my king on d4 and your knight is perpetually stuck. At this point, I think probably white should be careful not to lose. Uh, I think he should still hold this without a ton of trouble, but you're sort of asking for issues here. Um, I definitely think this is still a draw, but you know, be careful. So I don't think this is uh, particularly convincing. So do keep in mind that just throwing everything at my queen side, I mean, you know, when you, taking my b6 pawn is basically useless. You would have to take both b6 and c5, get your knight out of the way and shove the c pawn, and that's very, very slow. That's not the best way to play this position. You have, your best way to play is to try to focus on the king side. Realize that you have two pawns against four and an extra piece, and that should um, and that should help you a bit. So, a couple of people are giving me g4, which I haven't considered, but um, don't know. after g4, I mean, first of all, I'm not sure I understand the point of black plus g6. King e3 and then king e5 and already here I'm starting to think black's gonna win. Like I'm if I get f4 check and king d4 without even letting you get my b6 pawn, then we're talking about black winning the game. So we got to be very careful here. We need a full variation to put black under as much pressure as possible. Uh, Austin, I think you've managed to lose this as well. This is what, king e3, king e5, knight b1, g6, knight c3, h6, knight e2, g5, g4. This I think you're going to lose. I will make, I will take on h4, make a whole bunch of passed pawns, and um, yeah, so, but that was closer than anybody else has got yet, so let's just... Think carefully here. And be nice to each other in the chat, please. I don't really want to fight with people. Um, knight f1 to e3, I don't think this helps a ton. Um, so Rhea, you want knight f1, king e5, knight e3, and I go g6. Why can't I start playing h6, g5, and f4? Yeah, this knight on e3 is not good. Because if you ever play knight d5, b5 is going to win. Okay, so Arnav has this right. Arnav, you want to share with us? I still can't hear you if you're talking. Oh, man. Tough day, guys. One guy's microphone is busted and the other guy sounds like, um, I don't know, one of those Star Wars creatures, Job of the Hut, or something like that. Um, yeah, so it looks like Arnov is unable to speak because I can't hear him, uh, which is a shame because he gave a very good variation. Um, but... Uh,
I'm going to share with everybody what Arnav came up with, uh, which is, okay, in the game, I forget the move order. If he started, I think he started with king e3, that's fine. But the whole point is that we reached this position, and then I think somebody gave this with g4, which feels totally wrong because we go h5. But here, white can play h5. And now black is in Zutzwang, which is very painful. Uh, he cannot play f4, and g4 is coming. So it was in this position here that I realized, wait a minute, I've missed something. And now you guys get the really hard thing. This is a draw, but oh my god, is it difficult. It's crazy hard for black. But at this point, I'm pretty sure it's... I don't know, what's... Let me hang on. If I go... Yeah, so king e3 was 38, 39. Yeah, so this is definitely just past move 40. So here... No question, I had the time I needed. I mean, I, I probably had like at least half an hour to figure this out. Um, and uh, I didn't manage. I blundered on the very first move even, but there is a way for Black to save this. It's a, honestly, I do think this one is possible to calculate out to completion. It's a long variation, but it can be done. Um, and there are some key lines to find. So the first step is finding the first move, but do your best guys, take some time. There's no way you're gonna possibly have this in like a minute or two or probably even five or 10, but do your best to calculate some variations to the best of your ability and try to save this game. It can be done. And if you guys do a good job, then you can go hang out and play among us and I won't make fun of you for your vernacular um, with sus or whatever you guys say. All right, let's start with this. We have a decision. Do we want to play g5, h5, and then, okay, let's put it this way. We're moving our king. This is clearly going to happen, but the question is, do we want to include the moves g5, h5 first, or do we not want to include the moves g5, h5 first? Rio, Rio, do you want to share your line? It was a pretty reasonable thing. All right, so let me ask you to unmute. Thank you. I want to include g5, h5. And now, can you f6 or something? Yeah, e6, f6. Hold on, I guess f6. So what, of course, tries g4, and now what? I just go back to e5. Right, and take. Yeah, take, obviously, and I take. So now, knight g3 check. Yep. King g4, knight e4. And we're taking a very important pawn here. And then knight c3, and king g4, knight d5, and then I, I think I have, it's at least enough to create counter play. Oh, hang on here. Yeah, this is, care we have to be careful here. Um, I'm going to be yeah. king f5. Um, just hang on, let me think. So if here this check is very annoying, uh, because now... Oh, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna lose this one because check here g3 here and then takes a knight f4 and we go yeah and then i'm blanking i just play king f5 just go back oh, or king. uh in this position here knight d5 king f5 yeah takes yeah. maybe okay. right. no, Rhea, maybe... i think i'm gonna let you go because there's a lot more to it than this i'm not sure how convinced i am about this um but uh, yeah, the key point is here that if you start with um, if you start with King F6 and do something like this instead, that White can play G5, uh, and here you're absolutely gone. Knight F4 comes. So like I played King F6 and he played G4, and I tried taking it, but uh, there's no particular doubt Black is absolutely busted here. Um, I tried G5, but I mean, because what else? Uh, so guys saying why I didn't go G5. I didn't think it mattered, but uh, I mean, I was expecting white to play h5 here, and my plan was to do this, but somehow I was inattentive and let him start with g4, because this would have transposed to what Rio and I were just discussing. Um, but uh, there is a key point here, which is that after, um, after h5, uh, king f6, g4, let's say we go this position. Um, I believe that knight g3, as Rio gave, is not the best move. I think what white should actually do here is play knight d, uh, is play his knight this way. Uh, and he's going to want to basically, 
he's going to go knight takes b6, knight takes c5, and then knight takes e4, and his knight will land like pretty close to where white's pawns are. And knight g3 seems like it's taking the e4 pawn first. I mean, if we think about it, white's knight is going to take all three of these pawns, which is the last pawn we want to take. It's the e4 pawn, because then our knight is going to be as close as possible to promotion. So after knight c3 here, um, this, is, uh, this is not so easy now. Let's find a variation that saves it for black. Anish, g4, g3, that's not going to work, because if g4, white can switch gears and say, now your king side is soft, and I go knight takes e4 and win normally. I don't have to bother with the queen side. So knight c3 is a very clever and very flexible move. White might want to take e4, but he also might just ignore it and go after the b6 and c5 pawns. This was the move that bothered me. So I think we have to play king g4. This much is clear, right? There's really no other move. Uh, and then say white goes knight d5. Now we got a decision. Are we going to take the pawn or are we going to play king h3? Keep in mind, white is being flexible. So a lot of people are giving me king h3. I think this will fail. Let's say we take this one and go g4, king f5, and this knight will come to e3, and the king comes to g6, and you are done. Very much done here. So that, I think, just completely wins. So uh, we have to take this pawn. Takes. Now... Next thing that should be pretty clear, I think we want to promote our h-pawn, not our g-pawn. Which way do we go with the king? This is not an easy question. All right. So a lot of people are looking at king takes e4 next move. I can almost guarantee you that's not what white's going to play. His goal is to play knight d7, knight takes c5, knight takes e4. Getting rid of your c5 pawn, getting ready to promote his own pawn, and bringing his own knight back as soon as possible, and his king gets ready to come back to the key part as well too. Well, let's put it this way. Between king g6 and king g4, one of these moves loses immediately to a relatively basic idea. We should be careful not to do that. All right. So the point here, guys, is if we play king g6, I think white can simply grab this pawn. And after this, white doesn't need to do anything. Your king, he can easily stop these pawns without any particular issue. And he's not even going to take the c5 pawn. He's going to win the game on the king side. Like... Here you're going to lose your stuff. Here you're going to lose your stuff. Like, white will easily scoop up these pawns without any particular difficulties. This is h3, and then um, I guess knight g4 or something, and this seems like it should win pretty routinely. King h5, king f3, and now uh, if king h4, I have knight h2, and king g3 will come, and white should be winning. Um, if king back to g6, let's say knight e3, cut that king off, get ready for king g3 next. You're not going to be fast enough to get to the um, to the pawn here. King f6 here. Actually, here, hang on. This one is annoying because here you have this and g4, yeah? Hang on. This one I think should be a little bit careful here. Um, what if I start with knight h2? Yeah, the, sorry, no, starting with knight h2 just does it very easily because king h4 and now king f3 and now I win. King h5 here and my knight will be very much in time. King g6 takes here, knight to like, okay, we have to be careful. Where does the knight go? Um, let's say here. Hang on, this... Definitely is lost, but at this point, it might be saving. Some trick here. Okay, what if I... Yeah, yeah. So what if I start with this move and then go knight f3? h2 takes here. And now hang on. Knight f3, king e4. Knight d2, king e3 takes, takes here. And you win by a tempo, huh? 
patient with the old man. Um, let me go back here. This is definitely winning. I'm just trying to remember here. This one was 93, H2. This is fine. And this was knight g4. This has to be okay. And then here, that was knight h2 instead. This was, I think, here. Yeah, maybe putting, yeah, I think you're right, guys. Putting the knight on f1 might just be a better square. Um, this might do it. G4, and then... Yeah, so here I think if we go king f4, king f6, we were just checking knight g4, guys, so I'm just, you know, I mean, this is, this is winning, but uh, it's, it's messy, it's not easy, like, here if king h5, knight h2, now I'm pretty confident, even I will manage not to screw this up, but this one is tougher, and... Not sure I see it yet. Knight e3, there you go. But g3, and then, yeah, this is it. Knight e3 wins, because g3 I can take it, and then I can go knight d5 and knight b6, and then I'm winning. So yeah, this would have done the job. Took a little bit of effort, but we got there. So, uh, but letting white play king takes e4 is wrong, so we must play king g4 instead. And now white goes knight d7, because here if white plays king takes e4, with black's king out in front, I should be able to make trouble with this h-pawn. But knight d7 comes, and now it's very important to not play h5, as then after knight f6 check, our king is going to be in trouble. We have to go to h4, and then we're going to get zoot swung pretty hard here. So um, we have to go king f5, and then there's this line takes here, takes h4. Okay, uh, be careful here. Find the best move. Okay, guys, if you play king e6 or king e5, white's going to take on g5, and then you lose, right? Okay, like, if king e6, knight takes g5 check, and then knight e4 comes, and white's king will come back and win. King e5 is maybe a little bit tougher, but perhaps we can actually play c6. Here, knight takes g5 is less convincing because of h3, but if we go c6, I think this is over. Here, and white's king is coming. And you lose. So we need a full variation here. It's hang on. Anish, you're saying knight g5 one here. What's the win after h3? Oh yeah, king f2, of course. Yeah, that works. Or king f3. Yeah, so that just doesn't work. Uh but we need a full very also king e5 c6. But we need a full variation. We realize that we can't leave the g5 pawn here. Um I need a full variation. You can only really consider two moves, h3 or g4. Only one of them holds. And you have to figure out which one and why and how we're going to proceed. All right, guys, don't just say one in doubt, push a rook pawn. We, like, actually calculate a variation. Okay, so Aradia has something interesting. Aradia, you want to share with us? Okay, so it's not right, but it's interesting, and that's going to get us in the right direction. So... Yeah, so I said G4... And I thought he has to go like um c six and then king e six, um and then he's probably gonna go like king f four or king f two. I thought they're the same because I'm gonna go g three, king f three, and like I didn't see any way to stop like king e seven. Yeah, and you're um, coming around like this, right? Yeah. So the point is that this knight cannot win with the pawn alone. What white really needs is his knight on h three to stop these two pawns, and then his king coming around to d five. If he can get that, he's going to win because he can always just burn a tempo like this instead of stalemating. But with the king and the knight in the wrong situation, this is going to be a draw. The problem with this line is that white can instead run his king towards the c pawn instead and go try to make a queen. And I think now he's going to get what he wants because no matter which way you push your pawns, like so, he's got this one. Or if you play uh, g3 first, after king c5, you, you're not in line for g2 because I'm threatening... Uh, knight g5 check, and the knight will get to h3. So here, 
Uh, I think that white is winning. I couldn't, like if king f5, for example, c7 is good enough. Uh, so the problem here is that g4 is just a bit too slow. You're not fast enough to actually threaten to make a queen. So the only way we can save this running out of time is to play h3. So I think Austin mentioned king f3 should win, but I don't agree. I think here we can go check and now king e6 and black's king sort of comes back to go harass the c-pawn and he can just like bring his king to c6 and start doing this and I don't think white will be able to win. So he's ready for king d5, c6 and then shuffle. So, um, so that should save the game. Uh, there is a key variation here after h3 white can play c6 and now if king e6 we lose to king d4 i think or no here h2 still saves it and here yeah okay so here's the point so now if king d4 here we can go uh h2 and now we're fast enough to like actually start racing after a check in here uh black is fast enough to make a race and c6 g3 and well, now white has to be careful, but okay, we'll be an immediate perpetual. But the point is that uh, by starting with the H pawn, we were remaining flexible about whether we want to race or whether we want to bring the king back. So here, if white plays king d4, we will not stop the C pawn and we have to race, but we're able to do so. This is good enough. Uh, while if we had wasted a tempo on g4 somewhere, I'm not sure that would have worked so well. Uh, and if white after h3 starts with c6 now h2 will lose to c7 because white makes a queen and black doesn't but here black can play this and now after king d4 we're just in time with h2 and black will save the game so ideally like if you're really really strong you'd like to be able to calculate this full line from the moment you go for this position it's a very forcing line i mean it's long but it's relatively straightforward and that there are not that many side variations along the way but yeah, look, I obviously under the circumstances of this game, even with a fair amount of time, I was not up to the challenge and I managed to lose this position. But um, a big part of this is just staying focused, making sure that you're really forcing yourself to calculate and not just sort of lazily guessing. That's a great way to lose, especially when you're playing against somebody strong and unforgiving like this fellow. Anyhow, I think that'll do it for today. I guess I normally do Q&A, but we went a little longer than normal. So I'm going to take two questions and then we'll call it quits. Um, so I'll get, I'll, t I'll accept two questions. Has anyone ever told you, you look like Bucky Barnes? I don't know who that is. So no, I don't think so. All right. One other question. Uh, is the Alakine good? That's, I'm not going to answer that because you already know the answer. Um, Let's see. Uh, okay, Kirk Gazarian had actually a reasonable question. What are good general rules for this imbalance? Knight versus, uh, you mean like knight versus three pawns, Kirk? Um, yeah, so for knight versus three pawns, uh, things you might consider. Uh, first off, in general, whenever you have pawns versus a piece, I think the more symmetrical a pawn structure is, the better it's going to be for the pawns. Like the last thing you want is like, you know, for example, if you can imagine a bishop against four pawns on one side of the board with a king, the bishop will probably stop the pawns reasonably well. Well, if you have one pawn out on the edge, you're going to, it's just going to go straight through. While if, um, if it's just four on one on one side, like the bishop will not win. Uh, but yeah, so in general, I think the more symmetrical structure is the better. In general, I think the pawns are usually happier as more pawns get traded from the board. Uh, and the first thing you should be evaluating is how good is the minor piece. So for example, if we were looking at this positions here, like white's knight is pretty good, but if white, if we had gotten something like this, like black is obviously going to save the game. And here, I think white has to be careful not to lose. And the reason for that is that is twofold. One is that black's pawns have gotten better and that we've been able to trade pawns off. And two is that white's knight is just not very good. Like it's not causing us any trouble it's not really threatening anything and here like white has to be careful not to lose anyhow that'll do it for today uh good job everybody this is fun uh it was a lot more fun analyzing this game than it was playing it i was pretty bummed uh after losing this one and getting knocked out of contention for top prize but yeah uh enjoy uh the rest of your evening everybody